Hello and welcome to A Course in Miracles TV. The lesson that we'll be working with on this program is found in the workbook, lesson number 68, and it's Love Holds No Grievances. And uh, I was speaking a little earlier about the workbook of the Course in Miracles and that we have in there 365 lessons, one for each day of the year. Uh, I find that most people, including myself, uh, was not really able to get through the workbook 365 lessons within a year. It took me the first time I worked with it about a year and a half actually to work through all the lessons. Uh, and basically I think that's the, the reason for that is that um, each lesson is so, um, you might say, uh, you know, um, compressed and so much information in each lesson that um, you kind of just want to hang out with a lesson uh, more sometimes more than one day, uh, especially if that particular lesson is something that's really pertinent to your life and that you're, you're seeing the benefit of using that lesson. And so Love Holds No Grievances was one of those lessons for me. Actually, this, there's a series of lessons from 68 to 72 in the workbook. Uh, ending with Lesson 72, which is um, Holding Grievances is an Attack on God's Plan for Salvation, which will kind of maybe in this program work toward that ending point. But um, uh, Love Holds No Grievances is a very uh, beautiful lesson and also uh, extremely um, uh, helps us to focus on the point of love being really the whole crux of our uh, journey back to God. And that grievances, um, grievances are an interesting topic because we, it almost seems natural to us to have a grievance, um, especially with people who are close to us. And um, those are usually the, the people that we have the hardest time with and that we have to work on forgiving the most. Uh, people that we work with daily or our household, um, our closest friends, our closest inner circle of people. Uh, and I think the reason for that is that um, we feel so much for these people that um, we tend to feel like even, you know, very, very vulnerable around them. That um, we know that if, if we say something or do something that they don't like or they say something or do something we don't like, it's not just, oh, you know, slough it off. It was somebody that I saw once and, um, you know, I can get over it pretty quick. With people that we live with um, or around a lot, um, there's a lot of opportunities for our, you might say, our buttons to be pushed. Um, those parts of our mind, the Course calls them spots of pain in our mind or dark uh, corners in our mind that need to be really revealed. And that's why um, our closest friends really help us. Uh, the Course even calls them our Savior because uh, without that mir mirroring effect, without them being around us and showing us where we are stuck or where we have 
really um, parts of our mind that aren't, aren't healed, without that kind of mirroring back to us and reflecting back to us, we wouldn't know. And there would be no way to really heal uh, what's happening in our life. And so we can be grateful and thankful for um, you know, those people around us and who are uh, really our closest uh, connections in life. But also it can expand into a wider sphere. Um, I know, for example, one of my uh, most difficult people, it used to be anyway, it's getting a little easier now, at least with Clinton in office, uh, used to be the President of the United States. That was always my uh, place I'd get hung up a lot. Um, I remember when Nixon was President and um, um, who else did we have there that was Reagan, you know. And, uh, I would find myself listening to news or reading the paper and being very upset that this president that's supposed to be representing humanity in America, so to speak, uh, was saying and doing these things. And, uh, you know, so I would have difficulty just reading the paper and, and listening to the news. So Reagan, in particular, as I um, grew, Reagan became quite a symbol for me to work with because once I caught on to what my ego was doing, then it became more of a game to see how quickly I could forgive Reagan. And um, it, it, you know, I got pretty good at it. <laughs> I don't know what it'd be like to live around him, but uh, when I would see him in the, you know, newspapers or the television, I would bless him and say, for example, there's a lesson in the course, uh, God is the love in which I forgive you, Ronald Reagan. Um, so I would practice that le lesson with him, and then it got to be George Bush. George was a little, I think, more difficult for me because I could relate to Reagan a little bit easier than I could to George Bush, but I definitely had the same lesson with George Bush. God is the love in which I forgive you, Mr. Bush. And so you can see that uh, we um, have people in our lives that we may not even see physically every day, but they are presence in our life. They are a sort of a, even a symbol, you might say, in a lot of ways to reflect back to me where I have unhealed parts in my mind. And so forgiveness is the key to happiness, the Course says, that once I can let go of a grievance, once I can let go of an upset or you know, anger or, or a sense of wanting to attack someone, even uh, just mentally, I don't have to do it even verbally or physically, but just mentally in my mind, I, and the more aware as I study and work with the Course of those thoughts of mine that are really sometimes pretty vicious. And they're, you know, and I have learned with the Course not to take them personally. That um, everyone has these kinds of thoughts. I mean, they're, uh, one of the things about the ego is that everybody has one. And the ego's whole game is to keep our mind in a state of separation, the experience or the sense of separation from God. And forgiveness is really the way to um, release those grievances so that we begin to experience our oneness again, our oneness with our environment, our oneness with our neighbor, with our friends, with our family and work co-workers, and um, on out into all spheres of life, even into farthest reaches of the universe. I read the other day that, um, that they found two planets uh, orbiting a star somewhere in the galaxy of the Milky Way and um, they don't know yet whether there's life on those planets uh, as we know it, but uh, they did find these two planets. And so I think as we uh, increase our understanding and knowledge and our technology that we're going to find uh, pretty wild stuff out there. And I think some of the science fiction uh, writers and, and uh, movies and things like that may have had sort of a uh, presage of this um, period of our uh, growth as a planet that we actually may find some pretty wild things. I have no idea what we will find, but whatever it is that we find, I know one thing, that the uh, Course will teach me or help me to learn that no matter what it is that we run into in the universe, um, I have a function, and my function is to forgive. And if that, whatever that life form might be, I have still that function of forgiveness. And when I experience forgiveness, is when I'm most happiest and free and light and um, having a good time in life. Uh, so holding grievances is a major focus of the Course in helping us release those grievances. In this lesson, it's telling us that love, when I'm in the experience of love, that I am not in the experience of grievance. And that grievance also is a form of prison. It's a form of restriction. 
uh, its pain and hurt and can be, um, literally can be healed in an instant if I'm willing to practice some of the uh, methods and uh, principles of the Course. There's an exercise in this lesson that it tells us to sit quietly somewhere and uh, really bring to mind the people in our lives. And we will start off, let's say, with a major grievance, someone that we really have a real uh, feeling of maybe even hatred towards, someone that really did us in, you know, that really betrayed us, that really hurt us in some way. And so to pick that person and to close our eyes and to see that person and just accept them into our mind and say to them, I want you as my friend. I will forgive you for whatever it is that I perceive that you've done. Now forgiveness, as the Course talks about it, isn't what we normally think of in uh, traditional Christian terms. Um, usually I think in, in the traditional Christianity, forgiveness is something that's given to someone who uh, a lot of times doesn't deserve it or um, you know, it's, a, it's almost a way sometimes for us to experience our superiority as a Christian. You know, we must forgive this person. And uh, it's not really what the Course is teaching us, that in its terms, forgiveness is something that um, is an illusion, just like uh, the ego is an illusion and just like um, things that are done to us are an illusion. But the illusion of forgiveness is the closest we approach here in this world of the ego world um, to the truth, to love. And so it's not based, by the way, it's not based on forgiving what someone did or didn't do. It's based on the fact that they never did anything. And that's great news, not only for them, but it's great news for me because I know there are many situations in my life every single day where I'm stepping on someone's toes or I'm trespassing on their property or, you know, in some form or fashion. It may not be physically on their property, but in some way I'm um, moving beyond someone, perhaps their boundaries in some respect. And not intentionally necessarily, but just, just in the course of my life. And vice versa, I know that people are sometimes, uh, I have that experience with them in some way um, exceeding a boundary that I have set in some form. And so one of the beautiful things about the Course is that it teaches us how to forgive those occurrences and that who we really are is not our body, it's not our minds really, it's in the sense of the ego mind, it's spirit. And spirit is invulnerable. So whatever can be hurt in this ego world is not who we are and it's not who the other person is and that is what the illusion is. So when we forgive, we're not really forgiving something that was done because the only thing that can be done in that sense is to a body and bodies are not real in terms of the Course and they're not, they're not uh, who we are. So they're not really there's not really anything to forgive in that sense because the spirit never did anything and we are spirit. And so that's who we really are and therefore there really isn't anything to forgive ultimately. But it's an interim step that we take. It's an interim illusion that we, um, well, for a period of time you might say that we accept this illusion called forgiveness. So that that helps us free us from any stuck place in our life. You know, for example, um, if I have an upset with a friend, it's not just an upset with a friend. That upset keeps every possible good that wants to come to me just by virtue of the nature of who I am as the Son of God, this flow from God to His Son and back of love, of life, of joy and peace. If I have an upset with someone, that all stops. And it doesn't just stop with that person, it stops in my life. Now that's why the Course teaches there's no small upsets. We're either in a state of love and forgiveness or we're not. And each person presents us with an opportunity to forgive. Um, that's why the day can either be about collecting grievances, which is what the ego wants to do. It wants to go through the day and collect all these grievances and like this, you know, almost needs a wheelbarrow to carry them around. 
and not only carry them around, uh, you know, silently, um, but to actually begin to share them with other people, <laughs> like giving them away to all our friends, as if they really need them. And um, so it's really not healthy to uh, collect grievances, and it's very painful in our bodies, actually, and it's the source of our sicknesses, all sickness, uh, whatever it is, a headache, uh, a cold or flu, uh, all the way to cancer and AIDS and, and beyond. All those things are a form of grievance, teaches the Course. And that if we want to heal um, not just the physical body, because that's an effect, it's, a, it's an outcome of our thoughts, it's an outcome of our, of our state of mind, uh, but what we really want to heal is the sense of separation in our mind. The Course calls it a split identity. Uh, the part of us that thinks it's a body, that it's, that it's the ego, that it's our home, that, that we're our jobs, that we're our careers, or our money, or our cars, uh, that's the ego. And then there's this other part of us that knows who it is, that it's spirit, and that it's invulnerable and immortal, and cannot be sick under any circumstances. So this is this identity situation that we were kind of alluding to last week on last week's show, that we have an identity problem. And the source of that problem is the belief that we have separated ourselves from God and that we're no longer God's loved and beloved and um, holy son, that we've become split off from that awareness. And the Course's job, really, and our little, little bit of um, what it asks of us, really, is not that much. It just asks us to take one year in our life and begin to work with these lessons on a daily base basis and read the text and work you know, back and forth with these for one year and begin to notice the results. The Course is very practical. It's, uh, it really is about being happy. Um, the most of the world seems to believe that if we have more money, we'll be happy. If we have more love, we'll be happy, or you know, more of the world's kind of love. Um, <clears throat> external things, if we have more of that, we'll be happy. Or I'll be happy when I get the new job. Or I'll be happy when I find a new house. Or I'll be happy when I get married. Or I'll be happy when I get divorced. All of these things are the world or the ego's version of happiness. Well, the Course doesn't deal at that level. Those are what it calls effects. The Course deals with cause, and what's the real cause of happiness in our life? Where does it really reside? So we work with these lessons and we discover that the cause of love in our life is not the stuff in our life. It's not even people in our life particularly. It's what's within me. That love is in me 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year into infinity, to eternity. It's all within me. And not only is it within me, it's within everyone. And so I have to constantly look at what I'm thinking happiness is and where I think happiness is. And when I discover that happiness resides in me at all times and my access to happiness is simply looking within me for forgiveness, forgiving myself, because ultimately that's what it boils down to. We really don't have anyone else to forgive in life. Everyone just represents a part of us. Uh, you know, it's so beautiful because we begin to see that every person in our life is a reflection of ourselves. And once we begin to see this, then each person really becomes our Savior, uh, our way back to God, because the way we see them, the way we think about them, and the way we treat them only mirrors the way we see ourselves, the way we think about ourselves, and the way we treat ourselves. And so if I can realize within me that who I'm really forgiving, even though it may look like out there somewhere I'm forgiving someone, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, um, you know, it's really myself I'm forgiving. And that is the beauty of the Course, that it teaches us that we don't go, need to go anywhere, we don't need to do anything. All we have to do, our little function, our little willingness is all that's necessary is to ask the Holy Spirit, help me to see this situation differently. Help me to release the grievance that I'm holding. And how do I know I'm holding a grievance? How do we know that, that we're not um, in a state of love? 
by the way we feel. If we're not feeling joyous, if we're not feeling happy, if we're not feeling light, we're in a state of forgiveness. Sorry, a state of grievance. And where we want to go is to a state of forgiveness. And this is the process. It really is about turning our lives over to the guide within, the Course calls the Holy Spirit, to direct our actions each day and to ask for help. You know, there's a, um, I'm going to paraphrase the quote, I'm not, I don't have it verbatim, but it's something like, let's say we have a specific problem. Um, you know, we all want answers to our problems. I mean, the day is about answering problems, basically. And so the Course tells us that we can ask the Holy Spirit literally for a specific answer to a specific problem. So, for example, if I have an issue or a problem, I, I want an answer to where am I going to be next year? Where am I going to go next year? Or, you know, if I need to find a house to live in, or if I need a job, or if I need a, uh, to make a connection with someone, or something like that. Anything, any specific issue or problem. The Course says, Holy Spirit, let me see this answer clearly. Give me an answer that can be seen and recognized as something that I can use. So the Course isn't airy-fairy. The Course is very practical. Let me have an answer that I can see, that I can recognize, and that I can use in this area. And I tell you, it works. All I have to do is just go within and ask to see, to recognize, and to know that this will work. And I get the solution. I get an answer. And you know what? It always works. <laughs> There's a, um, um, a lesson in the Course uh, on, really, on this whole idea of planning and how to go about planning our lives. And, um, and this really te tells us and teaches us how to do that. that uh, we, all we have to do, if we ever have a decision to make, if we ever have a question to answer, is call on the Holy Spirit, have a little willingness to open our minds to whatever the solution is, not to outline the solution as we think it would be or should be, but to really take a deep breath and trust and ask, give me a solution that I can see, that I can recognize, and I can see that works, and it will be given to us. So, in that sense, the Course is very practical, and in the sense of making our lives a lot more fun and um, enjoyable, is, it's very practical. So the second part of this exercise that I began with, so we pick a person that we have a major grievance with, and then we pick a person, once we've finished that and we've asked to see this person differently and to see them as a friend rather than as an enemy, the second part is to pick a person that we have a minor grievance with, and especially someone who's close to us, especially someone who's close to us. Take that person in the same way. I want to see this person differently. Help me to see this person differently. I want to see them as my friend. And what the Course is teaching us is that there isn't anyone in our life that we don't hold some grievance with in some way. It could be a major grievance or a small grievance. Well, according to the ego, that's pretty depressing. You know, the fact is, even our most loved ones, even the ones we live with, the ones we hang out with, the ones we work with, or whatever, the people that, we, that mean the most to us in life, really, even those people we have grievances with, even they, they are reflections of the parts of us that we're still not totally whole or feeling whole in. We really are totally whole, yet we don't feel it sometimes. So the recognition that this is all inclusive, everyone in my life I, I can find a grievance with, but also everyone in my life I can ask the Holy Spirit to help me see them differently and to release the grievance and to feel the love again. And this is an exercise or a process that we can do every single day. I do it every day when I get up. I always look at where I'm holding your grievance. The first thing, I turn to my lesson in the workbook and I ask the Holy Spirit to guide me to see the person differently or the circumstance, because there are circumstances that I'm holding grievances with. You know, if I, if I feel like I don't have enough money or I don't have enough, <laughs> if I don't have enough parties to go to, if I don't have enough uh, this, that, or the other, whatever it is, I don't have enough lack. Um, those are the things that I can turn over my perceptions, really, to the Holy Spirit. The circumstances may or may not change. 
you know what? Sometimes they don't change. A lot of times they do change, but sometimes they don't change. But I feel differently about them. And that's really the key. A circumstance, it's nothing. It's just a circumstance. How I feel about the circumstance is really the level which the Course works. And so that's called a miracle. When I can look at a circumstance from the ego point of view and be really stuck and really angry about this situation or a person, and I can ask for help to see it differently, and I begin to see it differently. I literally begin to see the situation or person differently. That is a miracle. And then I start feeling better. I start feeling more loose and relaxed and more giving, really. What this does is it enables to start giving again. Because in a grievance state, hey, I don't want to give. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just am stuck. And so in a loving state, all I want to do is give. All I want to do is release lovingly to the world, really. Um, last week we had a, uh, some performers doing a song, I Am Spirit. And uh, one of the lines in that was, I am free to save the world. And that's really, really what happens when we begin to let go of our grievances, when we begin to release people from bondage in our life. I mean, forget them. You want to be released from bondage. I want to be released from bondage. And forgiveness is the release from bondage. It can be a physical bondage, literally imprisonment, or it can be just an emotional bondage. It could be bondage to a job. It can be bondage to a home or a person or a situation. Freedom lies in forgiveness. Freedom lies in the willingness to turn that situation and ultimately all situations in our life over to the Holy Spirit so that the correction could be made in my mind so that I can begin to see it from a different angle, from a different viewpoint, which will enable, to me, enable me to feel differently about it. So love holds no grievances. And where this is going to in the next few lessons is that holding grievances is a literal attack upon God's plan for salvation. So it's not just affecting me. It's affecting everyone. It's affecting the whole world. So I can save the world by literally forgiving myself first. Forgive literally means give first. Forgive. So until next week, thank you for joining us. Love holds no grievances. God bless you. And have a wonderful week. Bye.